Oil, the lifeblood of modern society. Like it or not, this black stuff from under the earth fuels our everyday lives in ways we can scarcely imagine. And without it, the world as we know it, well, wouldn't be. There's nothing anywhere that doesn't have a part of oil in it. But getting this precious commodity out of the ground and into our hands can be tricky, to say the least. Set it, Mark! It takes patience. She's stuck. Long hours. Can't be Friday soon enough, I don't think. Ingenuity. Good job, boys. And a whole lot hey! of hard work. That's it! We got it! It was once said that oil is almost as vital to human existence as water. And whoever said it wasn't kidding. Americans alone consume more than 800 million gallons of it every day, enough to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool more than a thousand times over. Yeah, that's a lot. It fuels our cars, heats our homes, and can be found in any number of everyday items, from cell phones to contact lenses to chewing gum. And believe it or not, more than 80% of it comes from smaller, independent companies scattered across the country. Companies like Cameron Energy. Here in Western Pennsylvania, it's up to a team of 40 oil workers to keep some 2,000 wells pumping across the countryside. And today, they're working on well number 2001. Set it, Mark! Set it, Mark! To keep oil flowing into our everyday lives, Cameron Energy must bring in half a million gallons of new oil every year. A little more. That's good. To that end, they're betting big on a brand new $100,000 well and a tried and true method of extracting oil called fracking. That's good. That's where this guy comes in, John Stewart. As vice president of Cameron Energy and frack team leader, it's up to him to bring in the new well on time and on target. And as with most things fracking related, the pressure is on. That's a good tag. Atta boy. If something goes wrong or the well turns out to be a dud, then we'll just wind up with a $100,000 hole in the ground with nothing to show for it. We'll either bring that well to life and it'll be productive, pay for itself, and keep everyone employed or probably have to be talking about layoffs. Bitter powder, let's get at her. To keep costs down to a minimum, John and his team must finish the frack job by day's end. Fortunately, they're already making good headway. Well, that's how we do that. So far, they've drilled down 2,000 feet through 17 separate layers or stages of oil-bearing sandstone. From there, a bit was sent down to cut weak points or notches into the rock before refilling the hole with gravel. Seems a little counterintuitive, but that gravel acts as a backstop when they lower another tool known as a packer to pump water into the notches at 3,000 PSI, creating a network of ruptures that free up the flow of oil. So far, they're two stages in and preparing for their third. But first, the gravel between them and their next stage needs to be flushed out. That's the gravel we put down that hole yesterday. We gotta get all of that out of there before we can frack. We'll work it down past the notch, back up the notch, wash it all out. Though most of us just refer to it as fracking, the technical term for this process is actually hydrofracturing. That's because the key player here is water. A single frack job can require as much as 100,000 gallons of it, which is trucked in from the previous frack site every 30 minutes. There she comes. So right now, we just flushed, and it should be ready to frack, and hopefully get a nice, clean break. If it produces like John thinks it will, this well is expected to churn out upwards of 50,000 gallons a year and could be in operation for decades. But of course, in this line of work, there are no guarantees. Every frack job, we're either going to make a good well, or I guess we'll go home empty-handed. It's uh, make it or break it time. Yeah, go ahead, set it. Hey, Jay got the water truck stuck in the ditch. We gotta get out for more water. Christ Need the dozer. Sake. All right, right up here, yeah. let's go get it out. This John does not need. 
With the water truck on site already half empty, he'll have to rescue the next one from the ditch or risk shutting down the whole operation. There's a lot of bleeping in the oil business because there's a lot of pressure on guys like John. Bringing in the new oil well is essential to Cameron Energy's survival. But so too is ensuring that the 2,000 other wells on the property keep the oil flowing for the American public. And making sure that happens is up to well tenders like Brad Bowden. So we've got a busy day today. I'm gonna try and get as many wells pumped as we can and I'm pretty eager to get home because it is my son's birthday. So we're gonna get pumping. Across the US, wells like these extract more than 4,000 gallons of oil per second or about enough to fuel your average car for 10 years. But unlike larger operations, which can pump oil around the clock, the wells at Cameron Energy need to be routinely shut off to allow oil reservoirs to refill underground. Years of experience and a pretty strict schedule tell Brad when they're ready to be fired up again. Open up the production valve where the oil's gonna come up the tubing. Pump jacks like this are the workhorses of the oil industry, and their mechanics are ingeniously simple. A gas or electric motor powers the above ground assembly, which connects to a rod running 2,000 feet down to the oil reservoir. There, a pair of one-way valves work in tandem to pump oil up to the surface. And here in Pennsylvania, that oil is one of a kind. So if you notice the yellowish tint in this oil, you won't see it anywhere else in the world. This Pennsylvania crude oil is yellow because it's a paraffin-based oil. Lightest, sweetest oil in the world. So I've got a bunch more to get to right now, and we're going to get moving. Cameron Energy isn't the first outfit to target the rich oil reserves of western Pennsylvania. Roughnecks have been working in this region since before the Civil War to extract the all-important fluid that fuels our lives. Just ask one of the latest in that lineage, Alex Grubbs. Uh, the importance of oil to America is it's, it, it literally runs everything, and not only is transportation, but your means of, of heat sources, cooling sources, electricity. Most aspects of our life you don't even think about are, are affected by oil. And when a well runs dry, it's up to service operators like Alex to make sure it's safely decommissioned. Today, he and his team are headed to a 100-year-old well that's a little too close to another upcoming frack job and could pose a serious threat if left open. Uh, if we don't plug these wells, we can have blowouts during frack jobs if you don't know where these wells are and they have not been plugged. You know, it's important. All right, ready? To ready the well for plugging, Alex and his team will remove the 100-year-old piping so another crew can fill the hole with cement. All right. But working with hardware this old can be tricky for even the most seasoned roughnecks. I mean, this is a World War I era well. It was drilled well before then, and it probably hasn't been pumped since then. So this pipe is so old, you don't know what you're going to encounter. There it is. You got to be kidding me. That inch and a quarter is bridged inside that packer pipe. A bridged pipe is bad news for Alex and his team. It means the inner pipe is bent and become wedged inside the outer pipe. Continuing to pull with the same method runs the risk that the inner pipe will break free and fall hundreds of feet to the bottom of the well. That in turn would obstruct the cement pipe which must start at the very bottom and fill the hole to the very top. If it doesn't, well, you remember what Alex said about blowouts. If we're not careful here. I don't want to lose this and have to fish all this pipe because you know what that's going to look like if it falls down the well. So let's start shearing it carefully and we'll hook onto this two and a half and we'll keep pulling it. To keep it from falling, Alex and his team use shears to cut away the inner pipe, allowing them to unscrew the outer pipe piece by piece. All right, let's pick another one up. We'll just keep lifting and shearing and figure out where this thing's stuck at in there.
There's our inch and a quarter. No, oh, that's not good. Wow. That's rotted. Yeah, that's Almost rotted right quarter. up. The rest of that string of tubing's in the hole. For Alex, things just went from bad to worse. With the broken pipe at the bottom of the well, they'll now have to try to fish it out. How hard could that be? 